We're here at the Balboa Island Museum with Ralph Rodheim on March 10, 2014. My first question for you is, would you please tell me why Balboa Island holds such a special place in your heart? That's easy. You know, you, when anybody wins the Super Bowl, they say, where are you going? We're going to the best place in the world, Disneyland. They're wrong. Wrong. Best place in the world is Balboa Island, period, end of statement. No reason to live anywhere else on the planet. And anyway, I've, I've done a lot of traveling. And the one wonderful thing about traveling is you get to come home to the best place on the planet. That's really neat. Do you have a favorite Bevel Island story that brings back your childhood? <laughs> well, my parents moved to the island in 1958. And um, I was still in eighth grade. So they moved here early and I stayed with my relatives in Burbank and then in the summer after I graduated eighth grade then I came to the island and uh, oh my god it's just magical. I mean the sand, the beach, the sitting on the sea walls at that time, folk music and my sister and I bring our guitars and sing folk songs and you walk to town and, and excuse me for beeping. So, Everybody knows everybody. It's, it's like a small European village. You, you walk to town and you don't need your car on the weekends. And um, growing, you know, a lot of people say it's for adults. Best place in the world for kids. You guys should try it. We got an apartment you can rent. Uh, actually, we don't. Our apartment's rented. But uh, it's, it was wonderful. And uh, I guess my all time favorite story was I went to Newport Harbor High School, I was a swimmer, and I was a Newport Beach lifeguard, which is a really good thing, because when you're a lifeguard and you wear your lifeguard jackets, you got all the dates you wanted. Take your jacket off, it didn't count. You were just another anybody, it didn't matter. But lifeguard jackets worked really well. And we lived at 113 Pearl, and my dad took care of uh, the docks over on Garnet Street, and so they brought this really nice sailboat in and I met the young lady who was babysitting. She was there for two weeks, Lucy. God, I haven't thought of this in 50 years. And so Lucy, and so I started, you know, went out a couple of times, she said, do you want to go sailing? I said, I don't know how to sail. And she said, well, come on out with my uncle. He has a new boat. So I said, okay. And being relatively intelligent, I didn't talk to the girl at all. I talked to the uncle. And later that year, I got a call, said, do you want to go racing? And I said, I don't know how to race. He said, learn. And so we did. And I sailed with him for five years, almost every weekend. Um, his name is Gavin Herbert. Turns out he was the founder of Allergan Pharmaceuticals, the owner of Rogers Gardens. And he's like my godfather now. And uh, the boat we sailed on, um, Madness, and as much as I said I don't have pictures, I should show you the picture of Madness. Uh, that was the first boat I ever learned how to sail on. And this is now March 10th, 2014. I own that very boat. It's worth nothing. I put about $70,000 into refurbishing her. She's absolutely beautiful. But it's kind of like we live on the island. Just great, great things. And it all happened because of who I met here on the island. That's fascinating. Would you share perhaps some of the holiday memories that you've created here? Oh my years? gosh, holiday memories. No place better in the planet than mm -hmm. right here. Every Halloween is absolutely the best. And that's right now. When I was a kid, I guess when I was really young in the 50s, you remembered Easter because it was Bow Week and there were thousands of parties going on in the town. And at that, that time, I mean, it was just crazy, and kids were throwing eggs, and I remember one time we were, of course, I never did any of this, but um, there was one time down Marine Avenue, the police got at that end, and they swept, and everybody was pushed off the island. Oh, we live here. I don't care. And they just, so it was some pretty wild times down in Bow Week, and of course, Everybody from Pasadena and everywhere else who'd come down here and all the kids. It was it was pretty fun. But that was Bowie. Um, 
Christmas is magical. We don't have snow, but we have the boat parade. And again, my dear, dear father um, had a fairly large sailboat, Volari, and we would decorate her for the Christmas boat parade. And, oh, so many fun stories and going around and it's the homes and everything. It's just the magic kingdom. What was it like in the 50s? Well, remember I was like a freshman in high school or so. Uh, but let me go to the early 60s. Does that work? Yes, that'd be great. So early 60s, I'm at Orange Coast College. I'm captain of the water polo team. I'm on student government, very, very involved. And my best friend was the student body president. His name was John German. And behind our house at 219 Pearl was an apartment. So I didn't want to live with mom and dad, so they didn't rent it, so they gave me the apartment. And I invited my best friend, student body president of Orange Coast College, sorry, to come live with me. He did, and he was black. He was from Washington, Seattle, Washington area. The nicest guy in the world. All our neighbors next door felt that black people should not live on the island. Um, they, our home got egged, people threw eggs. They wouldn't talk to my young brother at the time. Um, and so it was really nasty. And in fact, the neighbors eventually put their home up for sale because they were concerned that the island was going to be overrun. Very sad sad part of the island history, but there was a lot of that. And then it was probably about 1963, I'm guessing, somewhere in that, that time. And so John lived with us and we were fine and, you know, it was for a semester and he then went on with life. Was there a housing covenant at the time that specified the, that racism existed? I know in some... Not to my knowledge. Okay. It's such a challenging experience to have witnessed and yeah, it was it was really awful. It was really really. How did the island change from that? Because it's not like that now. Well, so, but but see? let's go back. I can't. You know, the island is over generating. It was one person, my next door neighbor. Mm -hmm. Okay, across the street from it was Bill and Ann Maxwell. Didn't bother them at all. Uh, the Fergusons were across the street. Didn't bother them at all. But, so I don't want to generalize that the island was racist or any of that. It was these particular people. Uh, but it still is the memory of how anybody, you know, could, could have those thoughts. The island's known for its communal identity. Mm -hmm. Have you experienced that over the years? A lot of times with holidays, those are celebrated as a group, either through block parties or the, the parades itself cause you to, to gather. Um, what are your experiences with those memories? I'm not sure we have enough time. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was president of the Balboa Island Improvement Association at two separate times. I was on the board for over 12 years. Um, I think sense of community differentiates Battle Island from Lido Isle or anywhere else. Um, again, we walk around the island, you talk to people. You can walk anywhere in the world and you walk by and no one ever says hi. And here there's not a person you walk by, you don't say hi. Um, the events we have from the pancake breakfasts are wonderful to the barbecues, um, the home tour, just the various events that we do, and of course the parade, and I was chairman of the parade for two years and I'm still on the board and working on that. It's like a Norman Rockwell. I mean, it's, it's just, it's so dumb. And it's so wonderful to have the dogs and the children. We're not trying to be pretentious. We're not trying to have the biggest or anything else. And with no advertising, you get four or 5,000 people. I think the island's gonna sink one of these days, but it is so, much fun. And our tree lighting ceremony when we come there and the, it's it's a very family oriented 
village mm -hmm. to live in. And uh, again, I can't think of anywhere that has all of these attributes. The 1950s are remembered for its quintessential, you know, nuclear families, leave it to be regeneration. Did that exist here in the island to you? Since it sounds like some of that was shaped um, through some of your memories of it being. Um, well, again, back in the 50s, what I remember when my parents would come down here, they loved boats, so we'd always go to the fun zone, we'd rent paddle boards, uh, we'd go sailing in snowbirds and the flight of the snowbirds and um, sat on the seawall. I, I don't know that I remember the 50s as much as the 60s when it was the Hoot Nannies and, and all of the folk songs and the Kingston Trio and um, my sister and I and, and that. Uh, that's really what I remember. Leave it to Beaver, yeah, I saw that on TV, but I'm, you know, I think our family was pretty normal. I had spectacular parents that went to every one of my swim meets and every one of my water polo games and couldn't do enough and dad would buy boats and I was the one that sailed and you know and he let me do all of that um, and um, free. Would you share some more about the Hootenanny music experience? Some of that is resurging and it's such movement. a fun time because it involves people. It's not just going to a concert and listening to one person, but it really gets to everybody where you get to sing and get involved in that kind of music. And uh, across the bay in the Fun Zone area, there was the prison of Socrates and uh, that was there. And the whole Fun Zone area was just amazing with the rendezvous ballroom and the surf music. It's really the soul of the city, even more than the island. Um, Pet peeve, you didn't ask the question, but for me, I live on the island. If I were to ask you where you're at, you're going to say Balboa. This is not Balboa. Balboa is across the bay. That's the fun zone area, but nobody knows it, so I'm wrong. But for me, this is the island, and I don't say I live on Balboa Island, I live on the island. Or you live on Lido. But uh, for young people as yourselves and others, this is Balboa. They don't know what that is across the bay. Okay, back to your question. Sure. I'm a native Arizonian, so this We're is in Arizona. Scottsdale. So this is all. We have two boat rentals there. Experience. That's great. Yeah. Tempe Town Lake. Yes, absolutely. And Lake Pleasant. Yes. Um, perhaps you can share how the island became a home to you. Well, again, the brilliance of my parents, and I think of interest when they moved down, uh, they actually rented at 113 Pearl, was our first. Um, they could have bought a bayfront, I think it was like $45,000, couldn't afford it, so they ended up buying 219 Pearl, I think it was under $20,000, under 20000 we built our home here, and I paid more for that in cabinets <laughs> than they did in the, their whole house and everything else. So, you know, parents moved down here, um, and it was just kind of an instant love affair. It was just, there's nothing not to like about the island. People say, parking, what do you do about that? It was never really an issue, and uh, gosh, I had friends and People came and it was just, just, as I say, it's the best place in the world to live. Would you share um, perhaps your favorite story about a celebrity you might have encountered here? Mm -hmm. I, a celebrity on the island, I, nothing is coming to, to, mind right now, I will tell you that uh, much, much later on, I do a lot of sailing and I get my boat in Bay Shores, and for some reason I was still young and needed a telephone, and so I ended up knocking on the door, and John Wayne opened the door, and I said, I need a phone, and come on in. I mean, that's kind of, oh my gosh, uh, but that was, that was much later on. I, I guess the 
Only celebrity I really know here is Tina Wade. Um, you know, there, I can, I, you know, shame on me. Buddy Epson. Buddy Epson. Mm -hmm. Buddy Epson Absolutely. was definitely a celebrity that lived here, and uh, with his sailing and that, we'd see him out and around. Um, Jack from Dragnet. Jack, I forget his name. He lived down in the J.C. Penney house. Um, I know Shirley Temple was here, but I. I just love your story about John Wayne. That's just an encounter nowhere else most people would have that ability to just kind of waltz up and do something like that. So it's such a it's, neat It is, the whole area. Experience. And again, I get in trouble all of the time from my wife because when growing up, we never ever locked any doors. Didn't lock your car, you didn't lock your house. The doors were there. Um, you know, and I still do that. Dumb, I know, you can't do it. But another quick, quick story. This I'm going to tell on my wife. Here you go, Penny. I will, my lips are so... No, no you're, going to, you're going to enjoy this. So January of this year, 2014, we had a wonderful opportunity to go to Australia and New Zealand. And our partner who lives on the island on Sapphire was going to drive us to LAX. So boom, we put our bags in the car and we get that and we get to LAX and we get off at Delta Airlines and we take the bags out of the car. And he says, where's my purse? Airline tickets, thousand dollars in cash, and we're there ready to get on the airplane going to Australia. And she says, I think I left it at home. So this is about the island story. So I call my neighbor who happened to be there, and I said, Jim, would you go out? And he walks out on the street. Her purse was sitting on the curb with all of that for over an hour, just sitting there. And so that's amazing that nobody steals it or anything else. That's Balboa Island. But more importantly is to have a neighbor like Jim Burns who said, I'm going to drive. So we quickly left LAX and drove to Long Beach. He left Balboa Island and drove to Long Beach, threw the purse in the car, we got it and we didn't miss our flight. It's amazing. Oh my gosh. So that doesn't happen in most neighborhoods. It doesn't. That your purse is safe, your money is safe, and you have a neighbor that was right in the middle of dinner and everything else drops everything to drive 40 miles to help us out. It's really another way of living down here. I've noticed that being a shared experience, that, that bond that people create with their neighbors and they become lifelong friends. And so it's well, it, it's sentimental it's, that it is. you it's, see that kind of experience. Again, we're really upset with the weights that they moved off our block and we don't have as many block parties, but we had that. Um, yesterday, in fact, um, one of our neighbors passed away with cancer, but we had an entire block party celebrating her life. Uh, we have entire block parties at the beginning of summer and the end of summer where our whole block gets together. It's like the most fun block on the island. I don't know about others. It is others, really but, true. But we regret it now. We, we, you're still welcome here. You're always an Onyx member. That's cute. I like the, the term you've created. The street names. I've noticed there's streets become almost a miniature extension of the family. Do you share that by chance? That um, a club or extended Relatives, well, clearly, residents? clearly, the residents of our block we are close to, we talk to. Uh, the other day, your neighbor knocked on the door and said, you know, we're doing something in the house. Do you mind if we come over and have some wine? Well, we said, of course, come on over. So we started drinking wine. He says, I got the barbecue going. So we gave him the stuff to barbecue, and he ended up spending the night and talking and having dinner together. It's, it's just amazing. And I think each block does. We have the island identity, and so when we do the parade and we do that, I don't say I'm Pearl or I'm this or that, I'm an islander. Um, but clearly, you know, the proximity of the neighbors, at least on our block. It's great. You have a dual identity in a sense then with the larger community and it seems like you've broken it down into smaller parts and so 
You really yeah, have an Island is just fun. It really it's, is. it's just like the most fun place. We're just absolutely blessed to thank you, Dad, thank you, Mom, for coming there. And when I was growing up, my dream was to be able to afford to get back here. It's a very expensive thing, and so to say, you know, I'm going to come back, and that was always my lifelong dream. How has that been with the generational experience, since you've not only shared your childhood memories, but your adult life, and were able to bring your family as part of this? Um, I'm not sure what the question is. How has that whole experience shaped you, since this island, it seems like to be part of your larger identity, and it's the next generation's appreciating, oh. do they appreciate the same way that you do? I'd have to ask you. I, I, yeah. You know, I, if anything, I would say probably not. My daughter moved to Seattle and lives in Seattle with her family. And I to Australia. You know, stupid <laughs> kids. They, I know. Um, and so, you know, we will leave the house to them and they'll probably sell it and not, not appreciate the house spectacular, everything the island. I mean, just the historical society here and uh, everything about it. So, again, I'm just really blessed and every day thankful of being able to get up. And the other really dumb thing, we used to have a big house and had a big backyard with the jacuzzi and the shuffleboard and never ever used it. Now we have a little patio that sits on front of the street. We're out there all the time. We have cards where we judge people when they park. You got a 4.2, a 6.5, and they get all embarrassed. Uh, had a lady and said, we'll take care of your car, and I decided I'd wash it for her. She came back and washed it. I would go wash for her. Stupid stuff, fun stuff. It's the island. It's great. Would you share about any life-changing events that occurred to you at Belleville Island? Life-changing events. Well, everything important in my life came somewhere or another when I graduated high school, when I graduated junior college, when I graduated in Chapman, and all the ceremonies and everything was here when I got my master's degree. It was here, and you celebrate here. So, you know, when I got married, the birth of my daughter, of course that wasn't on the island, that was in Harborview Homes. We, I haven't lived here continuously since 58. It's, you know, after college, I was in, during Vietnam, I was an infantry officer, first lieutenant. Uh, I was fortunate and was shipped to Korea, not, uh, not Vietnam, but uh, and came back, was a school teacher. And the uh, goal was always to come back here, so we finally were able to do it, which was a funny story. And Tina probably knows more than I do. The realtor had called on. Um, Saturday and said, we've got a house for sale. It's going on the market on Monday. I said, where is it? What side of the street is it? How much? I said, buy it. Never saw it. Never saw it. And so we bought it and I brought my wife down here and she started crying when she saw it, it was a mess. But we were going to tear it down. I knew that when we bought it. So it was my daughter's 16th birthday. So we said, okay, kids, you can do a demolition party. So we gave the girls spray paint, we gave the girls hammers and they went through the walls and spray painted and hoses knowing it would come down the next day. And we had wonderful neighbors like Dean Lee. Unfortunately, something happened and it didn't come down for a week and we looked like the ghetto. It was not a good way to start living on. Hi, well, next year we are. Wondering what's going on. True story. What year did you move to the island? When I built my house? Yes, when you that was 1989. 89, great. That was 89. We built the house 89 and 90. Wonderful. Would you share your favorite story about a business on Marine Avenue, even if it does not exist today? Uh, I think probably my favorite memory would be the Jolly Roger. When we'd go to the Jolly Roger and we would get our ice creams, Buccaneer Malts, I think they were called. So good, I want one now. Uh, and just being able to do that. But all the businesses are great and they're friendly and it's, it's just, again, very, very special. We do what we can to support the businesses on the island. Now that we've got a really good bakery there, it's so much fun and 
Uh, I was, uh, I guess my other really favorite memory, more recent, was um, the Babylon Island Coffee Company. Lee Sutherland had their coffee house right across the street, and they used to have the singers, and we'd go and we'd night, and we'd have coffee and sing, and it was just a real wonderful place. Unfortunately, Starbucks came in at the end of Babylon Island Coffee Company. You don't compete with Starbucks. That actually was my first reaction to the island, because seeing Starbucks, I'm kind of confused why it wasn't a mom and pop shop. Well, so. it started with mom and pop, and, was, and they'd be good ones to uh, interview, Lee and Holly Sutherland. They would be. Thank yeah. you. I'll put that on my list, yeah. actually. You would be good. That's excellent. Um, are there any other memories you'd like to share throughout the years with your experiences here? Just everything was, you know, when I, was, when I was real little, my parents had a group of friends that they met every month or so, Bill, Maxwell, and Ann, and the Fergusons. Um, and so as a child growing up, to see the camaraderie and neighbors, the neighborly, and what they did and stuff was, I think was just just wonderful and all the boating and the sand and teaching my brother how to sail and I don't have a bad memory. I don't think it's possible to live here and have a bad memory. When, when Ralph was the president of the BIIA, they he put together a buckboard with hay bales in the back. And Santa drove it over the bridge with horses on the island. And my daughter at the time and little Kathleen, they were four, rather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they got to sit on that. My daughter will never forget that as long as she lives. Riding in the back of Santa's horse-drawn yeah. carriage yeah. onto the island. Yeah. Jingle bells on the round of horses' necks. Ching, yeah, ching, yeah, ching, yeah, ching, yeah. ching. I mean, it was just like, it was pure magic for a child. And Ralph put that together for island residents and everyone came and watched Santa get off. They took brides on the bucket board, they had the tree lighting and the Christmas carols. But that, that wouldn't happen in any neighborhood that I'm in, especially in California. Yeah. It's unusual. Certainly is. Unusual. Mm -hmm. I loved it. That was That's one of my great. favorite memories of a holiday. Okay. Thank you for your time. You're Appreciate welcome. It.